in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, privilege to bring the word of the Lord to us every time and see the most powerful thing about the word of God is its ability to produce results if the word of God did not have the ability to produce results we will be wasting our time I just want you to imagine for one minute that everything you have believed were a lie that would be a complete waste of time years invested in the pursuit of the spirit only to find out it's a lie but we thank the lord because that which is written here is true it can change lives you hear the testimonies all the time and tonight we will be changed in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i think a lot and one of the things that i think about is the level of transformation an impact that God has granted unto us as individuals and as a ministry to be able to communicate a dimension of spiritual reality to help build and strengthen the body of Christ and I think it's a great privilege you see the more you know God the more you see how easy it is for him to do without you are we together the more you know God, the more you have an encounter with his might. The more you see how small and inconsequential you are in the overall equation of his will. And then you see how much is a privilege for him sometimes to have to wait on you and wait on your will to cooperate with him before he moves. Are we together? And our lives um, are a reflection of such a testimony that it looks as though it is difficult for God to do without us although he has all the power and he seems to always patiently carry us along his program and it's a privilege for us to represent his purposes not only in this city but in many regards around different areas of this nation and around the world it's a pleasure and it's a privilege and we thank him let us never forget these things. There are so many people, thousands of people following us right now from different parts of the world. We are here, different people coming from different places. Um, you know, sometimes we get so used to how easy the anointing of the Spirit can make things become that we think it is so for everyone. And sometimes we get so familiar with the dealings, the operation of God's anointing that 
when we take our time to lavishly give him thanks like this, it looks like a waste of time. But then the success and everything that you see in our lives and as a ministry is built on laws. And one of it is a heart that is passionately committed to saying thank you. Are we together? If, if this is all we do today, as boring as it may seem, as unspiritual as it may seem, and as spiritually basic as it may seem for many, this is the key that has kept God in touch with many mighty people. They know how to go back and say, Lord, thank you. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. It's your grace, your grace shines on me. Sing it from your heart. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace shines on me. Shines on me, shines on me. But I'm everything with you. Shines on me. Shines on me, it's your grace. Hallelujah. Lord, we sincerely thank you. We sincerely thank you for the privilege of being the ones to partner with you in birthing such magnificent testimonies in the lives and the destinies of people. It is not within the power of any man to change any life. But with God, all things are possible. And Lord, we thank you for being the secret, the mystery, the law, and the reason behind our success and the lifting. Why should I keep what people say? They don't know. What you mean to me, they don't know. What you mean to me, truly they don't know. What you mean to me, they don't know. What you mean to me. But I'm glad I know what you mean to me. I'm glad I know what you mean to me. You are the air I breathe. You are the air. Your very presence that is living in me. Just let me pour out my heart for a few moments before his presence. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. You are Your very word that is spoken to me, oh, oh, and now I'm desperate for you.
lost without you. It's not a song, it's the truth. And I'm desperate for you. I'm lost without you. Shabaka talabarato sutu. This is part of the meeting. It's an atmosphere for you. tired of saying thank you to the one who has made us all that we are. We sincerely acknowledge you. You are faithful. Above and beyond our limitations and weaknesses, you are faithful. You have chosen us and you have put your name upon our lives and destinies. You see the wonder, the wonder you have made out of our lives. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful.
Take your place. Take your Can you just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit? Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just make contact. Oh, like a bride waiting for her groom. Even so, come. Even so, come. Even so, come. Kaparakota shabrandi geratu sata. Shekete pretekete berekete pras kata barada barada bar. Bena na ma na ma sota na 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 ma ine ine ma. Bena ma na ma sota na ma ine na na ma ine na. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. There is something that will lead heaven to this place. Keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. Rakata parada balada 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 balada
Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands there. There is a strong healing anointing in this place right now. You are sick anywhere in your body. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. I see the power of God about to touch people in a few minutes. Miracles of healing. suffering from intense migraine headache the power of God is touching you right now right now right now right now I'm seeing um, I'm seeing a lady having severe like like menstrual cramps severe menstrual cramps right now as I speak the power of God is touching 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 that pain leaves right now that pain leaves right now there is a spirit that has been walking with a lady. You literally feel as if there is a man walking by your side. That spirit is leaving you right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That spirit is leaving you right now. This is Zion, the city of the Lord. There's someone, your voice, for a while your voice has been unable to be clear. It's like there's something hooking you. You're going to feel like fire on your throat right now right now and your voice will come back to normal right now right now hotness of the body that's what the lord is telling me father we give you all the glory hotness of the body hotness of the body is living right now there is someone you brought your mother your mother is in this place she's been unable to sleep for a long time she can't even sleep but right now the power of god is coming upon her and that devil is giving way right now. 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 There's someone you have a boil, like a boil in your nose, right inside your nose. The power of God is touching it. Not only will it be healed, it will disappear right away. You will touch it and you will not feel anything. Right now, the Lord is touching. The Lord is touching. The Lord is touching. I'm seeing a river in the realm of the spirit. That's what I'm seeing flowing into this place. A river. It's a river of miracles. Many will be swept by that river. 
is a river that flows from the love and the throne of God. It's a river bringing healing, bringing healing, bringing healing. There are, there are miracles going on, healing miracles. Zekate paratos shabakarianda kapros kotos kepres ketos shepres ketos sepatari ketos abaria. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a spectacular miracle that the Lord wants to do for many people. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a group of people in the realm of the spirit. You used to hear God in profound dimensions. But from the beginning of this year, something happened to your hearing. And it's an attack from the gate of hell. Now please pay attention. I'm speaking by the spirit. It's an attack from darkness upon your hearing. And it's like something has closed you some of you don't even know you are part of it i'm about to pray for you because that that prophetic dimension you need it to hear what i want to teach you tonight you need it there are some dimensions of spiritual communication that you cannot understand it scientifically and the lord is asking me to pray therefore father i stretch my hands on your people every gate of the prophetic that has been closed every gate every gate the hearing ear let that grace be released Right now, the hearing ear, the hearing ear, Sata Kaparata. Many of you will hear the sound of angels instantly, instantly, inside, outside, those following on our social media platform. The Lord is opening, the Lord is opening prophetic dimensions, the hearing of the spirit, authentic hearing, not nonsense, an authentic hearing, Shakataba. For some of you, it is restoration, restoration, restoration. What happened to your hearing that you no longer hear the sounds of the spirit? Like fire is coming on the ears of people. Fire, 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 fire falling on people. Fire, a restoration of hearing, a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing lift your hands there are people here your dreams used to be prophetic but it was and my God said, something is happening to your spirit man the hand of god is coming upon your spirit man the hand of god coming upon your spirit man right now dreams dreams Shaka patata. Strange dreams. Where you will understand the counsel of God. In the visions of the night. The counsel of God. In the visions of the night. The counsel of God. In the visions of the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last thing I'll pray for before we sit down is sensitivity. Listen, let me tell you. If you lack sensitivity in this season and in this time, you will never be able to be in sync with what God is saying. Sensitivity is like breathing in the realm of the spirit. To be able to understand the impulses of the spirit and align yourself with what the spirit is doing and saying. He said the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. I want to pray for you. There is a grace that makes men sensitive. Many of us used to be sensitive, especially our sisters. Something has happened to your sensitivity. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. This is a mountain of the Lord's house where grace is sufficient. Grace is sufficient. Right now, I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to fall on men and women. Let it fall, let it fall. Sensitivity, discernment, sensitivity, discernment. Sensitivity, discernment to the speakings of the Spirit. Sensitivity, discernment to the speakings of the Spirit. My 
mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your throne. Hey, mighty on your throne. You were mighty in this place. Mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You were mighty on your Mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty in my life, mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. Father, we pray that you go ahead and do everything you intend for us to experience tonight. Right beyond our dimensions, right beyond our perceptions, right beyond our yieldedness. And oh God, I pray that you activate strange things in the lives of people. Strange things in the lives of people. Please sit down carefully if you can. Tonight will be a night of strange impartations. If you can, just sit down and let your heart be open. Let your spirit be sensitive. No carelessness, no distraction. Please. Koinonia is a place of impartation. You need impartation to rise and step into your prophetic destiny. There are times that certain things need to be activated. Nothing can cover for noise and stories. You must come into the reality of certain experiences. And impartation is one of the platforms that can bring you into those realities. Once again, I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Tonight is a night of strange impartations. And there is a reason why God is doing it. There is a reason why God is bringing us to this dimension of impartations. It's not just for nothing. Listen, in the course of my teaching, I'll be very brief tonight. But in the course of my teachings, there will be different kinds of anointings just coming in. You get this in Koinonia. Koinonia is a place where things are activated. And so when your word comes, it will come upon you. Yours is just to be sensitive. As I teach, there will be dispensing of graces. Dispensing of graces. Be sensitive. Don't just hear what I'm saying. A time will come. Yours will come upon you. So it's going to be a noisy meeting. Don't worry. You will hear what I'm saying. But as I teach, people will receive things. Will receive things. Inside, outside, everywhere. You will receive things. Shabratu sakuratu sabrita shidaha. Dembroto subrakata baria. Listen. The church must pay the price for a genuine anointing that will really be able to bring God to the scene. The church must pay the price for a genuine authentic anointing that will be able to bring true results for people the only way we can become a revelation of the Christ I'm telling you this is to contend for a dimension in the spirit that affords us the privilege of hosting superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. Talk is cheap. It's easy to make a lot of noise in the body of Christ. It's easy to stand upon many doctrinal and theological dissertations, communicating the things that we believe should be. But in the final analysis, people need to experience the reality of the kingdom. 
And I think this is where a lot of we pastors have not done justice for people. A lot of us are speaking prophets. A lot of us are mighty pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops. We can communicate spiritual reality. But the challenge is when it comes to the practical demonstration of the essence of our communication. We try to create all kinds of theological excuses. So there are so many things we teach that God is. There are so many things we teach that God can do. There are so many realities we, we whet the appetite of God's people by opening them up to the possibilities that can be in the spirit. But it is so frustrating when people's appetites are to the apex, yet we sustain the power and the life to experientially draw them into those experiences. So we teach on healing. We teach on different kinds of healing, different dimensions of healing. And then in the final analysis, the sick person still goes back sick. The cancer patient still goes back with, with their cancers. We are happy about dispensing theologically arranged communications. But the Bible says, listen, the Bible tells us that the gospel, listen, is not just about the excellency of speech. Right? But the demonstration of power. To the end that the faith of people will not be founded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of God no matter what you say about God if you cannot bring him to the scene for me to relate with his might you have wasted my time I may applaud you for your intelligence and your ability to be flawless in your research but let me tell you something, in the final analysis, people need to be transformed. Demons are not a theory, they are real. Sicknesses are not a theory, they are real. Oppression is not a theory, it is real. Poverty is not a theory, it is real. Only preaching largely are theories. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me a vision a few days ago. And in that vision, I saw so many people in the church weary and tired. That's what I saw in the vision including pastors i saw people seated and stranded no message because everything to be preached have been preached i saw members frustrated and humiliated and the lord began to reveal to me that it is a strategy please pay attention it's a prophetic teaching tonight it's a strategy by the kingdom of darkness because when you study when you listen to my teaching why revivals fail I shared with you dear a strategy with which Satan uses to defeat many believers. Satan will never strike you at your point of strength. He knows that all men are human. Although we are divine, there is a human component to us. So the moment you are doing the work of the kingdom, advancing the purposes of the kingdom, fervent in prayer, strong in the word, the devil will not attack you. He knows that there is one thing that is common to all men. It's called exhaustion. The reality of our humanity. That no matter how powerful you are, no matter how anointed you are, a time must come when the reality of your humanity will meet up with you. It is at that point that men are separated from the voice. It is at that point that only those who sustain a system in the spirit to continue stand. I saw that vision. I saw faces I recognized and I could not believe that such great men could be weary. Now you see a man of God can be weary and you will not know. Because don't mistaking the grace upon a man to dispense truth and his personal growth and progress 
There are two different things. I can be as dry and weary as whatever. But when I stand upon this pulpit, the anointing that comes with my office will make me act so flawless you will not know that I'm at the verge of giving up. Are we together? Most times, we're mistaking the grace and the unction that accompanies the office of a man to mean that because that grace looks ever fresh, ever flowing in power, that it necessarily means the person is highly motivated and happy. No, there are times I've been so tired, physically tired, going for meetings. And I, I can sometimes it looks like I can't stand for 15 minutes. But the moment I hold that mic, I no longer become Joshua Selman. An apostolic anointing comes and I can stand for hours. Now, you may mistake in my strength to mean that I am not weak. Do you know sometimes when I get back home, even to eat becomes a problem? Are we together? So I saw weariness in that vision. I saw many people gassing out in prayer. Literally like a meter just diminishing. I saw people gassing out in their word level. And one of the areas that I saw people crying is the area of not getting results financially and otherwise. It was frustrating people. I saw quarrels between people. Fathers, mothers, different people. I saw pastors fighting themselves. And I was wondering what is the meaning of all this nonsense. And the Lord told me this is what the devil wants to bring. He's taking advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping the nations as a tool. And he wants to wreak havoc in the lives of people. Are we together? Part of the advantages of a true apostolic ministry is to have an eye that sees. And the ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit part time. And communicate to people. The realities that are the emphasis of God for that moment. That's why we pray for perception. Because there are many of us, if your perception were alive, you would have picked the signal. Let me tell you something. It's important to gauge your spiritual growth. Don't let men clap you into spiritual mediocrity. What are you an MOG for when you cannot perceive the impulses of the spirit? What are you a campus fellowship president for? Or a pastor or an apostle? When the things of the spirit happen, discussions are going on in the realm of the spirit and your presence cannot be registered because you have not sustained an ability to rise beyond your flesh and understand the speakings of the spirit. Hallelujah. Ministry is not all about preaching, but the ability to perceive the impulses of people. When God makes you a leader, he commits unto you the destinies of people. It's your responsibility now to be in sync with the spirit. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. It says, and I will see what the Lord will say. Not hear what he will say. See, perceive, conceive what he's saying. When I saw this, my heart really broke. Especially when I saw faces I could recognize. I saw that people had gas out. Truly. Mothers who used to have a very strong prayer altar. I saw the thing going down. Usually it starts through carelessness. Here and there. Even if you don't pray one week, it doesn't matter. There's grace for me, I'll come again. And then before you know it, completely void of power. And you know the interesting thing? No matter how bad you are, the devil will never strike you. He's smart. If he strikes you, you will go for a retreat very fast. And you will come back. So he will allow you to keep moving. There is a threshold level. It's like a cage in the spirit. You keep going down, he will not strike keep going down one day he will aim at you and if not for the mercy of god and the prophetic he will hit you bad blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Father. Hallelujah. I will share with you three keys the Lord revealed to me. That if not managed, will strengthen the power of darkness to cause the havoc that it plans to cause. Take note of this month, July. You see, this month, July, there is, there is intense warfare going on in the realm of the spirit. Those who are sensitive, no. Those who are not sensitive, just assume and move carelessly and foolishly until they become victims. This month, mark this month, July, you see, is a month of intense spiritual building. You need to build capacity for the months to come. Victory is assured, but the strength of many will be tested in the months to come. You will see this happen. The strength of men of God, the strength of people, their, their spiritual capacity will be tested. And only those who have built fortification in the spirit, the Bible says for us to redeem the time, take advantage of the time, are we together so the devil is attacking the prayer lives of people dramatically you see he's not attacking it by stopping you from praying I will show you the things the first thing that the devil is using to sabotage the prophetic advancement of believers and the church listen is exhaustion the reality of the weariness of our bodies the reality of that weariness exhaustion psychological exhaustion physical exhaustion are we together so when people gas out they come to a point where it no longer makes sense to wait upon the lord and trust the lord because many hopes have been disappointed many dreams seemingly look like they are shattered people look at their experience versus their prophecy and it does not match and so many are fainting including the great ones who should stand to strengthen many people and there's nothing to be embarrassed there that's why god is opening us up to it so that we will rise is god blessing us exhaustion weariness that fatigue that spiritual fatigue where you want to study your bible and you just look at it and it looks like a burden you want to open your bible and study it looks like a burden you buy books but you don't read them you buy dvds but you can't watch them there seems to be a spirit that takes advantage of our humanity and our weariness so you are buying books you are buying tapes you are downloading messages those around will think you are taking advantage of them but you know that it's been a long time since you made contact with these resources. Not because you are not of God. It's called weariness, exhaustion. Even the young men shall faint and the youth will utterly fall, he says. That's the first thing that I saw that the devil is taking advantage of to destroy people. Just destroy people. Just destroy people. The second thing that the Lord revealed to me is financial limitation write it down i saw a lot of people whose focus had been distracted and the reason was because there were no resources i saw okay, churches groups people even people who used to participate actively in the house of god prayer meetings prayer groups the reality of the stress and strain that lack of finances brings a lot of people started asking themselves questions look we're, we're humans let's go and, and and solve our family needs first and it's a plot it's a plot by darkness are we together where believers go to pray and they can't pray because of financial weariness and even if they pray the entire circumference of their prayer is lamentation and a plea for open heavens you may not realize it but it's a strategy it's a strategy listen let me tell you something satan weighs the governments of nations like a treasure on a balance 
and manipulates them according to his desire. This thing called mammon is Satan's weapon of mass destruction. Mammon. Mammon. That spirit, the only spirit that Jesus taught that you can worship either him or that spirit. He never said Satan. He said you cannot serve two masters. So in any way, your servanthood must be registered. Either to God or to mammon. Hallelujah. In that vision, I saw people losing jobs. Companies downsizing people. There are not many times you hear me speak prophetically like this. But you write it and see. I saw it happening to people. Are we together? Several people confused. Even, do you know that pastors and churches went down financially because their members didn't have the means, you know, offerings and tithes and all of that. And it was a weariness to people. And subtly, the teachings about spiritual growth, the teachings about empowerment, intimacy, encounter, began to diminish because the pastors were forced to have to continue talking about finances. It became as though it was the only key that would have to keep the people coming to the churches. Are we together? When I saw this thing, my heart dropped. And I said, my God, what is this? You have to do something about this nonsense because the devil wants to take advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping Africa and that spirit that is sweeping Nigeria, that bitterness, that offense. Many people no longer pay attention to God. You meet somebody and talk to him about spiritual growth and the person will even tell you to go away. Why? Because we have said it unapologetically in this ministry that when your finances is not secured, it will affect your spiritual life. There's no confusion about it. I hope you believe what I'm sharing with you. Oh, please, you better do. Please, you better do. Because it will happen. The third thing I saw was, it's like flies. You know how house flies? Like a swarm of flies. Now, there are times I've seen these things prophetically and I've shared them here over. But I saw a swarm of flies just coming across regions. Ah, and I looked at it and the Lord took my mind back to the plague one of the plague that happened in the days of moses when those the swamp of flies came around and began to consume people and i had in my spirit the ministry of the devourer manifesting as sicknesses manifesting as tragic events and ultimately death i saw this thing rampant manifestation of mysterious sicknesses that cannot be diagnosed in hospitals they will check you with machines and say nothing is, is happening blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed are you for you come in the name of I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September. It was almost unbearable. I'm not, just listen to me, I've not finished preaching. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw it was bad. Economically, and otherwise it was it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess i saw people being um what do they call it laid off from work completely laid off husbands wives laid off their services were no longer needed in different sectors including government sectors they downsized people because they needed to accommodate what was happening are we together? 
I saw an increase in crime rate, theft, stealing, including stealing people, not just stealing things, stealing people. Why is God revealing this? To scare you? No. God is revealing this to strengthen you. He will never bring a prophecy without a strategy. Just keep following. There is always an exemption for the church. But the problem most times is we don't pay attention. There are people who hear what I'm saying now. I'm, I'm sorry, especially for elderly people. They just shut down and say, all oh, these idiots talking again. And then until it happens, and then we become victims of situations and circumstances. You see, let me tell you something. Prophecy, prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people, to make people privy to something that will happen. The most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption. Not what will happen. The strategy for exemption. Any true prophet that brings a word from the Lord, especially if it's a word that is on the negative side, if it came from God, God must be able to speak to his people and say, this is a strategy. You can choose it. Especially for certain things that are written judgments. You cannot pray them away. But there is a system. Like the flood of Noah. There was a system that was built called the ark. Like the passing of the angel of death upon Egypt. The mystery of the blood of the lamb and the Passover. Right? It was the mystery of exemption. But you see the church. We, we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the new testament teaches i can relate with god i don't need to hear anybody leave me alone if he's so god will speak to me if god has not spoken to me i will not listen let me tell you something listen i was teaching the school of ministry students our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the lord jesus christ but the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants you have to understand this your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter, my knowledge of who God is, his ways, and that's how I grow. In the Old Testament, it used to be through prophets and mediums. But now the Bible tells us that Jesus has come as a mediator. He's opened a new and living way to all of us. We can now access God directly in terms of spiritual growth. But the advancement of God's kingdom is not general god finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension and every time god wants to deal with the territory in that dimension it must come through those channels they are called spiritual tribes they represent the communication of god's purposes in a dimension so when you talk about faith Every time God wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith, there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and aligned them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect. Bishop Oyedeko, Kenneth Copeland, you can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard. Are we together? There are other dimensions. When the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation, there are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world. It's not general. So your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what God is doing. When God wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity, I know that everyone will be blessed, but there are people who have a personal covenant with God that represent his speakings in that regard. You will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned. So the advancement of the kingdom it's not based on personal relationship. It's based on covenant. God calls a man called Abraham. The first man in the Bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with God. Are we together? He is God's type of faith. The only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of God as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that God entered with one man called Abraham. Are we together? When God wanted to salvage a nation, 
he used one man called Moses entered a personal covenant with Moses that afforded Moses an unusual access to God beyond his personal spiritual growth because Moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land how be it based on that covenant to an extent that although Moses may have failed spiritually in the book of Jude an angel came to carry his body and Satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems they are not just human beings they are systems Elijah was a man who represented God's system God's covenant of reformation God's covenant of of um, forerunning revivals he's called Elijah the Tishbite are we together so by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind and say don't make it look like only some people can hear God no the idea is not a show of superiority the idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees they are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities I've shared it with us here Abraham gave birth to Ishmael with Hagar. Is that true? Hagar was crying. Ishmael was crying. But the Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad, not the voice of Hagar. Why? Because when God looked at Ishmael, he saw Abraham and received and saw the covenant. God, more often times to say, he blessed Solomon for the sake of his father, David. Are we together? When the kingdom was about to be advanced after Christ came, he got 12 men, entered a personal covenant with them. Listen, let me tell you, there is a difference between those apostles and us. We are equal in Christ, but they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with God that represented the advancement of God's kingdom. If Satan killed all those 12 apostles, the kingdom could not be advanced. Because it was through them that it would be spread. That's why God protected them. Angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out. Are we together? One man called John, the beloved, had a personal understanding. It was his personal covenant with God that granted him access to show us the revelation, the apocalypse, the unfolding of prophecy. There are still men like that on the earth. There are not many, but there are. In fact, the system of God's electing these men is always in twelves. There's no time to teach you on that. That God's apostolic governing system is always in twelves. So in, in regions, you will always find this number, twelve. The apostolic spiritual governing council of God. They may not even know themselves. But they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? But you see, when the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm, nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers the moment an imbalance gets so bad that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment it calls for concern are we together and one of it is of course as we know the concept of grace are we together now now when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that God is doing it becomes an error grace as a doctrine on its own is an error 
it only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing when you study the book of Ephesians the book of Ephesians theologically speaking contains the highest church truth are we together where Apostle Paul was teaching the church he was giving them certain doctrines the entire scope of a Christian experience six chapters which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer so it starts theologically speaking with what we call sitting right you've heard you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages it was that revelation came by a man called watchman knee watchman knee was the, the the apostle that god used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of christ and so that position of sitting the bible starts in the book of ephesians teaching us how in fact when it starts in chapter one it never talks about us it talks about christ and all that he has done when you start reading chapter two it now brings us into the scene right we are now raised up with christ so the revelation of god's grace is seen in chapter one and two and it is true that the foundation of a believer's life is predicated upon the grace of god there are certain things that we can never have ourselves like righteousness it is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself the bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags and do not confuse righteousness and uprightness they are not the same righteousness and uprightness are not the same righteousness is a gift from god uprightness is our response the advantage our our work of faith i'm just giving us are, are you getting blessed i just want to establish a few things before we continue it's very very important so the bible starts teaching us on the grace of god and all the possibilities that come with that grace all that christ had done for us in his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension into heaven in fact it was on the strength of that that paul began to teach in chapter in verse 17 he said for this cause i have a passion for you understanding this this is the foundation of your victory in christ and for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you right the spirit of revelation you know and understanding that your eyes been enlightened or flooded with light that you may know certain things one is the hope of your calling and then you know the power that raised christ that was exalted when christ was raised from the dead you know and, and all of that and paul begins to speak he knew that the church needs to know that but paul did not just walk there he didn't stop there he began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith right character now you taking advantage of the grace of god i told you there's there are two dimensions to the grace of god there is the grace of god as unmerited access and there is the grace of god as power to live like christ they are all called grace don't just confuse them grace does not just mean what god has done and we receive by faith there is a dimension of grace that represents everything christ has done that we could not do and he gave it to us we receive it by faith but there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do we will do but it's not by our strength are we together and then he wraps up the book of ephesians with what is called the the you know uh, standing and then our, our, our walk and then you know sitting and standing then it talks of spiritual warfare our ability to contend against powers and principalities and listen every doctrine that must build a believer please hear me every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components whenever there is a deviation from this pattern it will lead to error if you try to teach people how to do warfare how to do character and you forget the grace of god you will lead them into error and legalism are we together when you try to bring isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith you will lead to self-righteousness which does not hold any weight in the spirit and so it must be in that order the first thing believers must understand about god is not warfare is the grace of god and that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation a revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, jesus christ which is a reflection of the love of the father so when we see that grace then 
our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us and then our standing it says haven't done all to stand stand now let me tell you something the part of this truth you ignore is the part the devil will use to destroy your life you can't choose sitting as it were grace you can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it you can't choose deliverance just like that there's a series on it and you can get it after the service it's called the full gospel where all these doctrines were examined one by one there are imperfections there are imbalances to the end that the bride of christ will become perfect he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breadth equal in height and part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets christ himself being the chief cornerstone god stations these men so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from uh, uh, chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um god jesus christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who god is not what he's doing are we together there are people who believe in miracles but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic that lapse is satan's authorization in their life there are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit but they are well-meaning people that lapse is satan's you know advantage in their life there are people for instance who believe in grace but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that and satan takes advantage of it there are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of god and satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything the key is not exemption the key is balance everybody say balance say it again balance the key is balance because all of these things are components of the same system hallelujah and so i want you to believe the prophetic is real it is still functional it did not die with the new testament the prophetic is real now i know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it but it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water lives can be rescued when we understand what god is saying and the bible says he that hears he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches so if he's talking to one person he's talking to the ecclesia the church hallelujah pray one minute and say lord i hear what you are saying i'm not rebellious i hear what you are saying you are speaking to the church i am part of the church and i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying i'm not a rebel i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying go ahead and pray
Hallelujah. The key, listen. I want to share with us some strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we'll take some time and really pray. I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace. Are we together? If you fight economic empowerment, get set to struggle spiritually. Promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering. And he said, having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points. How true. You see, let me tell you something. This system that we live in, Cosmos, is a system that was designed intelligently. Are we together? God made the heavens and the earth, but the system, the social strata and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by Lucifer, the custodian of the Antichrist system. And he built it such that our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment. Please listen. Are we together now? And part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful, loving, but we have not paid attention to our finances. And in this season, our flaw is becoming obvious. Are we together? Many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings. Many churches that will have to depend on rent or something. The man, the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue. It is locked and what happens? The sheep is scattered. It's a strategy by the pit of hell because the Bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender. So our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers. Please get this. If that is your thinking, you are already in error. The concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon. That spirit that is, is compelling the nations to worship her. There is a spirit. It's called mammon. If you have not seen that spirit, just look around our government. And you will know that that spirit is being worshipped. The obsession for the worship of images and the worship of Lucifer did not start in our generation. Right? Remember when a king built 90 solid feet, go and said at the sound of music, everybody will bow down and worship. And your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow. Some gentlemen said, oh king, no. They found another system of exemption and they changed the tide. Businesses are bowing already. Churches are bowing already. Systems are coming to their knees. I've heard men of God who didn't used to talk about certain things. And I've been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the Lord. And the reason is because for every leader, what faith is to the realm of the spirit, that's what finance is to this realm. You must pay the school fees of your child. Are we together? And that reality is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life. But everybody say there is a way out. Shout it, say there is a way out. The way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments, goes beyond business. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. You see, if you do investments, you need money to make money. Is that true? You need money to make money. If you do business, you are selling products, you are selling services and that's all right. But the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily. Are we together? Meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand. There is a limit to patronage and all of that. But the key, I've said it again and again, is when you become the product yourself. Not just that you offer services, you become the service. 
when you become valuable not just have things that are valuable but you yourself as a person you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value you have entered your financial sabbath i guarantee you the most expensive commodity for instance on earth is the anointing and when you have the anointing we used to jokingly say it sometimes with a jimmy how that we watch people who we know do not know one maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know but because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth which is the anointing and its ability to provide supernatural solutions they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon so god's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in nigeria it's not only to surround ourselves with valuable things valuable things are important but be the value yourself and we have that advantage because the holy ghost is here to help us that's why i said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural you will enter the sabbath of your life do you believe what i'm saying please believe it i can sell palm oil is it not when you need palm oil that you buy it are we together i have palm oil in industrial scale but until there is a demand but you see let me tell you something the rev the world revolves around certain things that will never um, run out of demand one of it is the anointing one of it is the realities that come from the life of a man in partnership with the holy spirit such that even in your business you are offering much more than the product first and foremost you have risen to a point where you have become so valuable then any other valuable thing around you only becomes a support not the basis for your confidence do you understand what i'm saying as harsh as the economic climate is there are people moving as if it doesn't exist in nigeria please don't ever deceive yourself that everybody is crying let me tell you why we all look like we are crying because people have found out that if you don't cry with others the the anger and the pain they will fight you back so they just cry and say kai honestly god is, is faithful but the truth is not everybody is crying there are people who are far from crying they have found the key every one naira that seems to disappear did not go out of earth is somewhere it's in the hands of those who have paid the price to become valuable i made up my mind that as god grants grace i will pay the price to be so valuable because by god's grace my life and this ministry should not come to a point where we are stranded and the purposes of the kingdom becomes jeopardized simply because of a, a god called mammon look at me do you know that there are many of our families we have tried to bring them maybe for the meetings and they may not want to listen but how many of you know that if we buy something tomorrow and we say everybody should come and line up vim homo sewing machine bikes you will see people who swore that they will never come here you see them standing even if they will not use it they will get it and go and sell it and quickly use the money that's the reality of economic hardship and from the vision the lord showed me listen people will do things that you will not imagine do you know in the bible women ate their children the bible said can a mother forget her child this one a mother remembered as he ate the child that's what finances can do you talk about prostitution is child's play when poverty hits people they will make calls that they did not made for years you see if you do not empower your people don't blame them for perversion and i found out that you do not judge spiritual seriousness just from the face you can see someone praying but knows that 
there are seven people whose daily bread are dependent upon them they will go and sleep with any allergy anywhere and bring the money they will even bring it and so project ten thousand are we together say in the name of jesus i exempt myself from this economic hardship say it in the name of jesus i exempt myself from this economic hardship the bible says when men say there is a casting down for you it says you will say there is a lifting up there is a lifting up there is a lifting up but if you don't believe this sooner or later you will have to face the bitter reality of this prophetic word because it will happen I want to be honest with you i'm not one person who just prophesies everything i see but I, I i salute the government of this nation i know that they are doing their best with what they know and whatever covenant they are part of but i, I want to tell you one truth here i don't see transformation happening very soon let me tell you the truth all that I've, and, and I, I i don't mean to insult anybody but a lot of people have given so many prophecies you are going to see boom not 2016 it will happen for those who have the strategies but as far as the world is speaking you have not seen tears wait till july finishes I've, i'm telling you what i've seen you will see people sit down and cry like children i'm not talking of illiterates you will sit down and gather your degree and shed tears on it but for those who are hearing this thing and will pay the price to become valuable i tell you you will rise as if the devil does not exist It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with level of education. Hear me. It has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with having perceptions and receiving God's strategy for now. Don't sit down and confuse yourself saying this and that. I'm an astute businessman. Just keep quiet and let the Lord speak to you. I'm not daft. I understand business. If you hear me speak to you like this, it is what the Lord is saying per season. Let me tell you, what will give you bread is what God is saying, not what you know. What God is saying, the direction of God is the direction of favor. The direction of God is the direction of life. God speaking to us you must challenge yourself to be valuable in this season the devil is a liar Kai the devil is a liar there is a spirit in Asia called Quatsi Quata that's what the Bible calls mammon it's a spirit many of you have seen it is the image of a flying serpent a flying dragon that is the exact picture of mammon it's a spirit that will compel the nations to bow to its leadership i assure you many people will bow the concept of 666 is not just something you receive on your hand and receive on your forehead it's already happening when a system compels you receiving the mark is not just having a physical inscription it's coming under the sovereign rule of that system so that you have no options you have received the mark Are we together? But God is going to grant us grace. We will come out in another dimension. No, 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 no. Listen, let me tell you. I don't know about you, but Koinonia will not bow to this system. There is a superior covenant. We have the rod of a higher priesthood. No devil, no spirit, no system will make us change our message to tone down the apostolic work God has given so that we can attract certain kinds of wealthy individual. That's what is happening to pastors right now. There are certain messages you cannot preach. If it is not rich man friendly, get set to sweep your church by yourself. So you have to tone down certain things. There are certain mainstream TV programs right now where you are not permitted to teach certain topics. It used to be that you can't mention the name of Jesus. But now they've taken it to another level. Certain topics should not be taught on mainstream. If you teach about pressure, how to manage it, how love, how people can, can come together, 
a gospel of universalism marry anything anyhow anywhere doesn't matter you are, you are welcome the mainstream invites you but the moment you have an outspoken voice the system will strangle you and economic empowerment lack of it is satan's weapon of mass destruction it's worse than backsliding are we together pray in one minute and say i must be exempted in this season please pray 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 are you praying oh every time the devil tried to bring his arsenal and fight the church god is always one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead Keep praying. says your gates shall be continually open it will not be short day or night right that you will receive the forces of the gentiles that's what the bible says you can be valuable and exempt yourself from the economic whiplash hear me i'm not talking of business i'm not talking of investments I'm talking of being so valuable, carrying something that cannot be found in the earth realm, carrying something that is not of an earthly origin. Shakata barata, shakata kata kata barata supata, lende prekete doso to parikete ya. Hallelujah. Please sit down. sit down I told you there will be lots of impartations we'll pray my passion is that something will come upon your life listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters when this glory of God comes on a man it will change you you will veto laws and walk as if Satan does not exist never trivialize the anointing it's a big deal I'm not talking of being anointed where you are competing with people and fighting. No. God raises you by his grace and puts you in a pedestal. No mammon 
No devil. No policy affects you. It's a realm. It's a dimension. We frown at the supernatural because we think we're in an intellectual realm. Many times when pastors speak, a lot of business people just say, these guys are daft. They don't know what they're saying. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The voice of God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is why I will not want. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd guides. He knows where the green grasses are. He said, he leads me. He leads me. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Right? I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. Some of you, this is what you will need. You will step into a place and men will look for you. Who said where you are staying is too far? You have not carried something. When you carry something, listen, let me tell you when you know you are anointed. When no price is too much to meet you, you are really anointed. When no price is too much to meet you. Have you watched people during foil scarcity? They have their money but they still kill and they are not angry. That's how valuable foil is. When you get to a point where people don't mind trekking from anywhere to say, I have learned that the wisdom of God is upon your mouth. And we have come as a nation. That's where Joshua Selman is going to. is not an exclusive reserve of preachers power was never for preachers power is for them who will survive in this season because there are gates that you must stand against and it takes the anointing it takes unction not stories not preaching unction listen churches are closing because there's no results we argue and say it doesn't matter but they are closing the devil is closing them the devil is closing them people are coming in with devilish policies against the church you know why they have not seen our relevance by the time a city cannot do without the church no devil will close it no devil will close it listen so the key is not just making noise the key is rising to that point please hear me when you become valuable listen listen if i give you five hundred thousand to go and invest you can make money if i give you a product to sell if this is hundred naira everybody you sell to you will sell at hundred naira so you move at their pace but when you become valuable your reward is left to the perception of your benefactors one person can see you and give you hundred thousand because that's what he perceives the next person can give you 10 million because that's what he perceives is the key to accelerating ourselves to enter that wealthy place let me tell you some levels of businesses are too slow to supply the funds required for kingdom advancement it takes being valuable the queen of sheba there was no word on Solomon. She carried her treasure to Solomon. There are Shebas. There are Cyruses that must arise with their treasure. And I'm praying prophetically that someone tonight, an unction, an unction, an unction from the throne, an unction from the throne will come upon someone 
that will change your life where your voice becomes like the voice of God Listen, let me tell you this there will be no longer begging in the church all that depending on the world system no the key is not to sit down waiting for someone to employ you as good as that is the key has been given to us the Holy Ghost handing you the keys that can open any door and you will watch mammon mammon will watch you and not be able to do anything listen I saw this in the vision that the Lord showed me many people will be constrained they, they are like it will be as if they should die because the doors are closed let me quickly talk about the two points we're rounding up there is a key that will conquer exhaustion in this season please write it down there are many weary people and it's natural to be weary but let me tell you the key please hear me I want you to write it it's a very simple key spend time praying in the spirit spend time I didn't say pray in the spirit at will carelessly when you want spend time praying in the spirit I want you to fan your prayer life in a dimension that will be too hot for any devil Bishop Oyedeko said no matter how mad a man is no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire in the name of madness are we together you want to survive the tides brothers and sisters let me tell you your prayer altar must be like the seven times hotter fire that they threw the hebrew boys the bible says those who threw them themselves were burned to death are we together you lie down on your bed you turn a little shaka Where your prayer creates an effect you enter your house as you are shouting in tongues something is happening you are shaking gates prayer read your bible has always been the key to true apostolic and prophetic revival when you pray let me tell you no matter how dead your spiritual life is when you invest in prayer you will burn that devil to nonsense he must give you I don't mean prayer that you are just asking and begging and crying that's why I said pray in the spirit because for many of us our prayer in understanding is petition and languishing and pain and anger but you lock yourself and you pray I'm not just saying when you are in your prayer room you are moving on the road you are praying beneath your voice somebody drops a charm at you it backfires on him by night he has become mad are we together someone is carrying a talisman and you are sitting down and you are going to Savo he will drop at main gates because the fire is too hot he makes listen he makes his ministers wind spirits right his angel spirits and his ministers flames I've said it again I pity the herbalist that will make concoction and call my name. It's, it's not only that it will not work. If it didn't work, he has still insulted me. He will fry to death physically. Physically. I'm not, I'm not motivating you. You think they've not tried it? How can you be leading a ministry like this and not tried it? Only God knows till we get to heaven before we know how many poisons we have eaten. Let me tell you something. When your prayer life is alive and healthy, anytime you are walking, just imagine in your head fire, literal fire. Are we together? John Wesley said, Set yourself on fire, and the whole world will come to watch you burn. Set yourself on fire. Stop discussing things with people who cannot help you. Go and lock yourself. 
your body says I'm tired you say you are joking as you begin to pray you will first feel weak for a few minutes keep praying it's normal just keep praying when you touch that escape velocity you will touch a realm where strength you cannot explain will land upon you you plan to pray for one hour you will stretch five hours believe me I know what I'm saying nobody starts praying just out of comfort it's like you are starting you are tired you are moving you are tired keep praying don't say ah this and that the devil will tell ah there's something in the fridge Have you, don't just keep praying oh apostle I'm praying and thinking about women keep praying that's what he's supposed to solve there is a level to which the fire will be too hot your flesh must burn and allow your spirit accept listen when the holy ghost is called fire it's not just what we do in church fire fire no it's real fire fire is a mystery those who will pray in this season will record unbelievable breakthroughs believe me travel you pray in the spirit thank god we have a very robust prayer department you come there and stretch it out with destiny after two hours your antenna is to the heavens any demon is flying above you they hang there they hang there because you are passing you are not even praying the fire will roast every devil around anywhere that's what we are talking about listen many of us are too cold that's why the devil will come and sit on your destiny and it will look like nothing is happening there are cold churches a spirit will arise from somewhere and just come and sit upon the man of God and his wife and his family but for koinonia no way shout no way fire when there is fire burning somebody will come with migraine as he's crossing that 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 junction to enter koinonia the migraine will just leave that's fire speaking that's fire speaking it works but if you walk it it's not a gift it's a labor in the spirit this is the labor dimension of spiritual growth men will pay you let me tell you your 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 job is to just become genuinely anointed by the power of god and you watch what god will do in your life it's what a jimmy calls transformational wealth that dimension of wealth that is tied to people rewarding you because the last time they shook your hand every gate opened every every gate open just by shaking you do you think they want to be your friend absolutely absolutely praying in the spirit becoming valuable praying in the spirit becoming valuable the third key in this season is the power of corporate fellowship the power of corporate fellowship if the devil can successfully isolate you in this season just know that you are quarter to die are we together there is a difference between isolation and solitude once the devil wants to destroy you let me tell you what he will do look up please he will use offense huh? and push away everybody every intercessor in your life you will fight with him everybody who has grace and love for you you will fight with him he will push every relevant person push you to the wall alone and then that's where you sit down there and become a victim of his assaults a corporate life is a powerful key in the realm of the spirit the power of a corporate life that you come together and where i am almost giving up as you land with your fire based on unity of faith and the spirit of brotherhood before my fire jacks up your fire is roasting every devil that i came with are we together corporate fellowship how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron that priest down to his bed down to his cat he said for there the Lord has commanded the blessing corporate life I'm a man of God of myself you will pay for it in this season you need corporate grace corporate grace corporate grace because no matter what you have seen you will need that 
sometimes that corporate grace will help you confirm if the path you are walking is of God. The devil can isolate you and you just keep moving and you are flattering yourself until you land in fire. Are we together? But Koinonia, we are going to pray. I don't know about you, but for as long as you are genuinely connected to this ministry, you must be exempted from this nonsense that is ravaging nations. It's like an angel of death is, is entering families. Bam! Sickness. Incurable diseases. Have you heard recently how people are dying just from headache? They say somebody has headache. Before they rush him to the hospital, he's dead. How come on? A woman is pregnant. Just when labor starts, she becomes deaf and dumb. Then she dies. We are going to drive that devil out of Zaria. Are you ready to pray? No, we are going to pray. There is a church in Zaria and we will pray. We will pray and drive it far. And say we surround this city with a mystery that makes any enchantment not to be able to thrive. We represent God's seat of, of governance in this city and we must pray. There's no room for carelessness. We must pray. Lift your voice and pray in tongues for a while. Make sure you participate, everybody. Don't be tired. We are praying. Young and old, everyone pray. Japarapa to soto preka teke repeka tosh. Enkrete seka te barada barata kashige de barada ba. Rante ke te prosoto paka rada barada barada ba kasa vaka te preka de barada bosh. Zike te ke te karata kata vaka kata barada ba ka. Japaka raka to soto preka te. Enkrete te go soto koto barada barada ba. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Anointing. Sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart. are depending on us not our preaching the activity of the power of God upon our lives there are people standing here let me tell you listen this thing that I saw there are families I know I saw it happening to in that vision and I like you to pray you are not desiring the anointing out of covetousness you need it there are there are thrones and dominions that must be subdued an apostle Joshua Selma may not be there. The goal is not to have one superstar. The goal is that you carry fire and go to your regions and begin to speak the purposes of God. And while you are doing that, God will compel men to lift you. It has nothing to do with ministry. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Father, let a strange unction fall upon my life. Shake it, take 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 it
Oh, let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. In this season, they that will survive must be men of power, authentic unction, unction beyond imagination, unction beyond argument, unction beyond argument, unction beyond argument. Ta 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 ta. Ba ta ka parakata. Lord, send that fire upon my life. Send that fire upon my gifts. Send that fire upon my degree. Send that fire upon my PhD. Send that fire upon my business. Send that fire upon my company. Send that fire upon my church. Send that fire upon my family. Oh yes, send that fire upon my life. Send that unction upon my life. The earnest expectation of creation awaits my manifestation. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. 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 Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. One encounter with the anointing can give you an open door that your lifetime will not exhaust it if you believe what I'm telling you. One encounter, one, one encounter can open a financial door for you that will wipe your tears. One encounter can make you a friend to somebody who will pay your being a friend with him forever. One encounter. Listen, listen, hallelujah. I'd like you to pray a prayer. You've heard us pray it here, but I want you to pray it with all your heart. Everyone appointed to reward my grace, I compel them to appear. Go ahead and pray. It's not enough to have an anointing. There are men who can reward your grace. There are institutions. Send them, oh God, to Koinonia. Send them to your people. Men and women who need what you carry. Your entrepreneurial anointing. Your leadership anointing. Your spirit of motherhood. Send them to my life, oh God. Men and women who have what it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, look up. Look up. I know very anointed men and women. They love God passionately, but they have never met the people assigned to bless them. You don't preach for money. You don't carry the anointing just for money. But you see, God designed it in such a way that as you dispense the realities of the kingdom, there is a feedback system that should empower you so you continue being effective. Are we together? Listen. 
the day you stand in the presence, you see, many of us are around people who love our gifts, but do not have the grace to reward it. Are we together? You can labor and pray and fast and go and preach somewhere and someone will pat your back and say, wow, you are an awesome man of God. I've never seen a man of God in this state like you. That's not enough reward. But there is a way you can have an encounter and someone will come and bring a generator, buy you a car and say, what does it take to stop you from thinking about the finances? If you are such a voice, I should sponsor you rising to any level. There are men like that. There are some of us, the value you have now, let me tell you sincerely, the value you have now you, is, is enough for you to be blessed forever. But you have not encountered those who have what it takes. Listen, there are pastors, hear me, who until you preach somewhere where your helpers are, that's what will expand your church. All of a sudden, it will be like they are hearing you for the first time. Yes, I know there are millions of men of God in Nigeria, but there are others assigned to honor you, you, you. You can be singing, singing songs, laboring and traveling from pillar to post. But if you can discern, God can send you to somebody who has the means but needs your music. When it was time for the lifting of David, a spirit was upon Saul. And Saul needed a musician to drive it. All of a sudden, they went and fished out David. How many times did David play for Saul? When he played just once, Saul loved him. There are circles that I have entered. And I ministered once. And God connected me to people who will bless me forever. And that day, it wasn't even as if I was saying anything. It was just that God connected me to people who will be blessed tomorrow we're in Asaba a mighty meeting happening in the stadium and we're going to minister they started preparing for this meeting tomorrow one year one year they came to book one year in advance they have been praying logistics publicity all over the city and we're going to go and storm the gates of hell there is some you are not assigned everywhere Look, you need to pray that those assigned to honor what you carry. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated trying to be everything to anybody. Lift your voice one more time and say, direct them, oh God. Direct them. Direct them to me. Oh, in this season, direct my blessers. Direct those you have sent to be blessed by my ministry. Direct those who have been sent to be blessed by my business. Shabakata Bosh on the Prosa Sike Ruta Sabarikata. Direct them. You are a prophet, but not to everyone. That God will bring the ears of those who have been anointed to hear your voice. You are an apostle. Not to everyone that God will direct the people, the institutions. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying. That in this season, please hear me, that in this season, God will grant you grace to have passion for the house of God. That you will not allow the devil corner you somewhere and destroy you and destroy your family. He said, as for me and my house, I don't know about you, but as for me, I have made up, but the Bible says, they that be planted, no flimsy excuses. Oh, we are tired today. They that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. I'd like you to pray passionately and say, Lord, grace and passion for your house. Grace and passion. Grace and passion for your house. Supernatural grace. 
supernatural passion for your house for your house for your house hallelujah hallelujah we are rounding up one category of people who will be exempted from any nonsense in this season are passionate and addicted soul winners listen listen there was a time they needed money to pay for tax it was a period that they needed money desperately they had come to collect tax and jesus said go and catch fish and fish in the bible is symbolic of souls when they caught those souls in that mission work they found money as they were preaching god provided a way as they were preaching fishers of men they went to fish and they said open the mouth of that fish as that fish testifies the greatness of god and confesses with his mouth the lordship of christ you engage a law automatically that brings you wealth hear me please believe what i'm saying there are many people here who love god we are prayer warriors but we are not soul winners you stand up alone and drag yourself to koinonia you wave your roommates you wave your family members you come here and get blessed while you are getting blessed the devil is using them to destroy your blessing you go back home a soul winner is an intercessor lord you must change my family members there are people who can come on friday and say look i'm going around this place have you heard about koinonia you've never really come you see this this our shame big boy big girl there are no big boys and big girls in the kingdom it takes passion when you are doggedly involved in soul winning you schedule seasons of exemption i can tell you this i can tell you this are we together you are in your office you are there and you leave every other person someone tells you uh -uh, um the devil is trying to manipulate my life. Oga Jordan did something today that blessed me so, so much. Some people came to his shop to buy books. And the way they began to talk, at once he knew it was a demonic situation. God has given you spiritual intelligence. There is a way you hear people talk. What they are saying in the realm of the spirit is, I need help. You just listen to them and say bye-bye. The moment they began to talk, you know, Oga Jordan said this and that. They wanted to see me and he said, oh, it may not be easy to see me. But he bought communion and took a bike and came and said I should pray on the communion. And returned it back and gave the people. And I was looking at him. I said, why won't he explode? Let me tell you. If God, if your life becomes an epitome of support for God's interest, forget about begging. This is the God I serve. You may not know all you need to know. But that your life can find space to bring God. This is how this ministry started. Every night, somebody was dragging somebody. Come and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Come and get born again. You may not have the power to change them. But you have what it takes to invite them. Some of you, 50 naira is what you need to draw a soul. Ah, Koinonia has a crowd. It's not about competition of crowd. It's about destinies that must change. Are we together? What's wrong with calling your loved ones and say there is there is a platform now to hear this online? Since you think you are too sick to come, connect to the miracle service. You see, let me tell you something. This is what we do that produces some of the results. Anybody that is too big to win souls is too big to experience the favor of God. If you are too big to win souls, too big to win souls. Ah, I preached and they insulted me. So what? Didn't Jesus say it? Blessed are you when men persecute and revile you. Rejoice. For so they did the prophets and the rest. You have social media platforms that you can use as platforms to draw people to the house of God where they can be blessed. You see, until you see yourself as part of what God is doing, you are not entitled to his blessings. 
when you see yourself as somebody who just comes for koinonia leave the workers and the ministers when you exempt yourself you also exempt yourself from that covenant of blessing he said if you are the children of abraham you will do the works of abraham i'd like you to pray before i speak over our lives lord grace to be intentional about saving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray grace to be a conduit for someone to be filled with the holy ghost grace to be a channel for someone to receive the teachings that will change their life don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter you just serve God like that according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everyone say after me, life, life, godliness. Life, godliness. There are things that pertain unto godliness. Your character, your work with God, your prayer life, your spiritual development. Those are things that pertain unto godliness. But there are things that pertain unto life. Your children's school fees, your accommodation, the well-being. That any man who is unable to cater for his family, according to scripture, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of God, you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a PTA letter. And your eyes, the letter is usually typed, except where the money will be. They write it with biro and the price is double. You stand there wanting to kill your son. Why has the school fees been doubled? And he says, hey, they just gave me to give you. And you look at it. Your salary is not increased. Nothing else is increased. But the bills are rising. The devil wants to send you to Egypt. A time will come what, what you would not do yesterday, you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pay. Hunger can take men to Egypt. hallelujah a dear man of God called me I think two weeks or so I don't know him so much and from one of these nations and he called me and was lamenting he said apostle pray for me our ministry is under serious financial attack he said right now honestly the way things are we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills you know things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed and you know i got angry in my spirit i said this is the kind of news satan wants because you see very soon the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives you will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright? Only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on. There are many things to address, but hunger should be one of them. Believers are hungry. They need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed. Let me tell you, there is a path which no fowl knoweth. The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. There are dimensions reserved for these times when God will bring out as a display of his intelligence. Do you not know that the strategy of saving 20% was God's intelligence? It's not just an economic strategy. There is always a reservoir in God's intelligence. For times when people cry, when the saints cry, God will say, show them that the wisdom of God is inexhaustible. Health care is one of the devourers in our world today. Do you know how much it takes to treat people? Once your son is sick, you are crying already because you know. How much does it take? We have so many doctors here. 
one of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman. And when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. You know, as, as I started doing, <laughs> and open an x-ray, an x-ray place. I mean, how much? Not the whole body. I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting 50,000 naira and you use 30,000 for x-ray, there is no reason why that child will give you joy. Are we together? Anything that child does will annoy you. And then help that child. Let him not take first or second or third. You will almost kill the child. There are real issues that we cannot laugh at. Real issues. And this night, God is determined to rise up and not only step in, but turn things around. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Thank you. John chapter 10 and verse 10, please. It says, the thief cometh not. There is a name Satan is called. And here he is called the thief. Are we together? If someone knocks your gate and you say, who is that? He said, the thief. You don't need to ask him what tribe, what gender. He will call the police immediately and say, there is a thief. There is an armed robber in front of my house. And Jesus is preaching here. And he says, the thief cometh not. That means you will never see him around. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So everywhere you see stealing, killing and destruction. Is a signature, the thief, Satan. He comes into a joyful family. Are we together? Happy husband, come my dear. Happy wife. When the thief comes in between them, he must scatter everything. One flimsy excuse or the other. He will come in between business partners and shred them. When Satan passes a place, you know this is him. He will leave his signature, stealing killing destruction we would be in trouble if jesus stopped there but he says i am come mm. he didn't say i have come i am has come to bring life and that you have that life more abundantly lavishly i am come that he may have life I have come that he may have solutions. I have come to show you that there is a way out of this. I am come to show you that there are possibilities. Are we together now? Now the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray. I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion. The Bible says, according as his divine power. Please give it to us. That's second, first, um, second Peter chapter one from verse two, please. Grace and peace, verse 2, be multiplied unto you at, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, it says, according as his divine power hath given us. So what gives us in this kingdom? His divine power. Never forget this. It is not faith. Faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass. The agency, the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power. For many years, there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing. There is no argument there. Are we together? Faith is the pipe that the power of God flows through to carry supernatural solutions to you. If there is no faith, there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation, it will not be possible. You don't choose faith or the power of God. That's not a theology taught in the Bible. He never taught any of them in isolation. His divine power. Every request on your list will be solved by his divine power. Now let me teach you this. I've taught you again. What is on you is what controls the results around you. Please never forget this. The results around you do not fabricate themselves. The results around you are mirrors. They are a reflection of the kind, the level, the dimension of the grace that is upon you. So I can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life. I can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes. 
it is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same. No. The testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest. They, are, they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace. Hear me. Every door can open. It just depends on the grace asking it to open. Everybody is a giver. It depends on the grace that asks them to give. Someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say, give me the privilege of blessing you. Nobody is really stingy. The problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension. They are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed. The earth is a realm of execution. The same way your body is. The anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you. Please listen to me. His divine power. There are doors that have refused to open. The doors are not stubborn. The doors are only obedient to the last instruction. And since the anointing speaking to it is not that high, the door will remain obedient to the last instruction. The day a higher authority speaks, that door will open, I assure you. Please don't generalize challenges. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. This is a message of hope for you to hear. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. Even the king could not solve the hunger problem of Samaria. Here comes the prophet. He did not come to solve the problem. He said, ah, okay, I see that there is a situation. Everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet. He said, by this time tomorrow. Then a foolish man said, even if God will open the window of heaven, how will these things be? And he says, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. I believe in the power of God. I've seen what the power of God can do. Stop wasting your time trying to change things physically. Creation has never been disobedient. Creation is the most obedient entity you can find. The money you are looking for is not disobedient. There is an unction that calls it. If it's not there, it is authorized to leave you. Creation is obedient. When Noah was ready to open the ark, when he opened the ark, there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves. The Bible never said Noah went to the wilderness to chase them. Animals with no higher intelligence, they found their way to the ark. If animals can find their way to the ark, why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you? Why should breakthrough find it difficult to... Noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk. You rest only when the grace walks. Let me tell you, life is hard when you are walking on your own. In this kingdom, we don't walk with our hands. Our hands only help us to receive the grace. When it comes, you enter your Sabbath. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The power of God is the spiritual mechanism responsible. The signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now, the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs, they will happen according as his divine power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The information is not that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which he was anointed. With the Holy Ghost and with power. It says he went about doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. There are people inside. There are people outside. There are people standing. In such sacrifice. Waiting for God. It will be very wicked to share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and tell everybody bye-bye. Return back with your challenge. No. I want you to believe God tonight and insist. Lord, whatever will come upon me must come upon me. Whatever must change must change. Whatever must grow must grow. Whatever must die must die. When there is no expectation, it becomes wrong for God to visit you. Because one of the things that he gave men, seven benefits given to man at creation, 
One of it is the right to choose. The will that God gave man is a fundamental right. It's not for Christians. Once you are a man, you were given the right to choose. Salvation, even at the detriment of your going to hell, was left for your choice. God will never, never, never violate your right to choose. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. I can only advise you, choose life. I said before you prosperity and poverty. I said before you success and failure. I said before you spiritual growth and, and a low level of spirituality. It's up to you to choose. I choose life oh, and everything that comes with it. I choose speed. I choose increase. I choose honor. I choose dignity. I choose open doors. I choose open heavens. It's a choice. And if you're a family man here, as for you and your house. You can't choose for the whole world, but you can choose for your house. That the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight. And that within the next one month, things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you. If you do not believe these things exist, you are not a Christian. A Christian is not just one who is born again. A Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. My assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace so that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June. Otherwise, what is the superiority of growth? If the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now, I'm only maintaining my spiritual level. I'm not growing. There was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles. They went to Jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money i've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no, you have to understand this. It's very important to know. I have, let me just steal five, ten minutes to explain this. Look at this. This is 1,000 Naira. Look at this. And if I give you this 1,000 Naira, it can buy a bottle of water. Is that true? It can even buy you lunch or dinner, depending on where you eat. But this cannot buy you a car. This cannot pay a child's school fees, but it is still money. So if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand. Every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it. Not every grace solves every problem. If every grace solves every problem, then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace. Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. To what end? It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs, and wonders be wrought in the name of your holy son. There was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha, and he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get results. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God, we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of grace. Are we together now? 
we are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet, lift your voice and begin to mention specifics. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Rise up on your feet and please pray. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh yeah oh yeah yeah say oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah Father, turn my life around. Turn my life around tonight. Turn my ministry around. Turn my family around. Is someone praying? Turn things around. Shalabarata <laughs> Katos. the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit and the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people, the power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then, and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. When you have them, please bring them very quickly. The Lord is already moving. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I want you to believe, believe that God will step in and turn your life around. Hallelujah. Turn your life around. From the back, right to the center. I'm seeing the power of God come on someone now. From the back, right to the center. From the back, right to the center. Please bring them out right now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this road. Right now it's like smoke just moving across. Right now from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by his spirit. Remember the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I command every oppression of darkness. 
I want to pray now. I see fire in this place. This is what I'm seeing. By the spirit of the Lord. And listen. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ. Responsible for any challenge and any predicament. It must let you go now. Inside and outside, online. Are you ready? Father, let there be deliverance right now. One. Two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. I cause every power. Bring them out right now. Every oppression of darkness. It must go now. It must go now. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still praying. The Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit. I'm seeing a padlock. And I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it. At the count of three again, you're going to shout that name. I see opening, opening doors that have been closed. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be open now. Every closed door. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors over families. Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. I decree and declare. Be open. Be open now. Bring them out, please. Be open now. Be open now in the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three. Across the road. Online. Be free now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing. I'm seeing like stones in a vision. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm seeing like a strange fire. These are representations of altars. Listen, there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances. Fire is about to come from heaven right now. In the name of Jesus, you are ready to shout now. Father, every family here that is under any kind of ordinance, I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let fire from heaven liberate that family right now. One, two, three. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, we blot out handwritings. We blot out handwritings. Bring them out. I cause altars, yokes of darkness, ordinances, Speaking against the people of God. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah, say. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states. The eastern state. Right now, God is bringing deliverance. The east, Abia, Anambra state, Enugu state, Eboi state. I'm seeing an anointing right now. Rest on people within that state. Let there be liberty right now. 
Let there be liberty right now. You belong to that state. The power of God is coming upon you right now. Right now. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. I'm seeing the mouth. The east. God is bringing liberty. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the map again. I'm seeing an arrow. And I'm seeing it go to Benway. Benway State. Right now I stretch my hands. Benway, Benway. That anointing, you are from that state. Any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now. Must let you go right now. This is by the authority of the kingdom. Benway State. Benway State, liberation right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Release their destinies right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front there are two families god wants to set free right now within this circumference i'm seeing fire coming upon them right now bring them out right now by the spirit of grace in the name of jesus the son of the living god things must change in your life my friend this young man, lift your hands where you are. There is oil being poured on your head right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head. Let it go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let him go now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Oh, yeah, Oh, yeah, Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed and a strange spirit just comes. Right now in the name of Jesus, the Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two, let that fire come now. Liberation from ordinances of darkness. Every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny, be free now. All those in front here, I decree, the power that holds you, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go. Leave them now. Release their destinies. Right now. Let there be restoration. Everything that has been stolen from hell. I command the restoration. By the spirit of the living God. By the spirit of grace. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Be free right now. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything that must leave your life, insist it must leave your life now. The angel of the Lord is removing arrows. I'm seeing arrows, arrows coming out of people that's what i'm seeing arrows 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 right now right here arrows arrows go now arrows have been removed out of people in the name of jesus madam be free right now be set free now the lord is setting someone free here right now Someone in this row, I'm seeing fire just resting on someone. Be free right now. 
In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those outside, keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands. Fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke. Right now, as I'm passing, be free. Be free. Help them, please. Out. Now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors. Be open now. Be open now. Now listen, overflow two. I may not touch you, but in the name of Jesus, I pass your robe. Except God is not God. If there is anything sitting on your destiny, it must let you go. Right now, be free. Be free. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Open up your gates. Your gates. Gates be open. Destiny be open now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Fire is resting on this road. Just right there. I'm seeing someone, the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now. I stand by this grace. Karis Kobaru Katosh, help her please. Anyone here, anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny, right now at the count of three, all of you just... I'm seeing fire right now. And I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs. Right now, be, be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. There is a lady here. God is saying it is over. Right now, I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now. Help them, please. Whether you're an usher or not, please, if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves. Hallelujah. Please shift. That lady, be free now. I'm pointing my hands to her. I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray. Begin to pray, overflow three. Pray. Pray, overflow three. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Overflow three, I came with an anointing. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Fire is falling from the top to the bottom. One, two, three. Go, go, go now. Every yoke, every altar. Be free now. Bring them out. Whether you are an usher or not, bring them out. Every oppression of darkness right to the back. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be free now. Be free now. Bring them out. I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ, release God's people right now. At the count of three, I'm seeing fire resting on people, and I'm seeing a number 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now. 
every door that has refused to open I open that door right now in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. There are 27 people here. The grace for speed is coming upon them. I don't know who you are, but right now, the grace for speed, I stand by the anointing from the front to the back. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that anointing right now. Speed, I release speed over your life, over your destiny. Receive speed in the name of Jesus. Speed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Overflow three, hear me. There are people here, the Lord is telling me, no one rises in your family. When they get to a level, something brings them bow. And the Lord is saying, I should shift you by prophecy. I stand right now, I don't know where they are. But the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Right now in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing the number 17. Lord, I don't know where they are here. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, move to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 14 people here. You have the call of God upon your life. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you. 14 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you, O oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 15 people here, overflow three. The spirit of revelation is coming on you. Unusual insight. I don't know where they are, but right now I'm seeing light, not fire, light. Light coming on people, 15 people, step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Main auditorium, please lift your hands. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. The grace for speed. I will pray it on everybody. But the main auditorium, there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people. They will begin to run by the anointing right now. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Main auditorium, I stretch my hands. At the count of three like Elijah. May that grace come. One, two, three. Receive that grace right now. In the main auditorium, step into the anointing for speed. In the name of Jesus. Overflow three, lift your hands. Every door that has refused to open over your ministry, over your life, held down by witchcraft, in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, I'm seeing doors open in the spirit. One, two, three. Let that door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. The Lord wants to avert death over a family. This year alone, between last year and this year, four people have died in your family. Four people have died. And in the name of Jesus Christ, an anointing is coming upon you right now. Let death be averted now in the name of Jesus. 
Now listen. All of you had overflow three and the extension there. Whatever must live your life. As I'm passing this place, please, I, I'm releasing my faith. Open your mouth now and declare, Lord, it must live my life now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pray, please. All those in front here, the spirit that ties your destiny, I command at the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Out of their lives. Out of their destinies. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. The power of God is resting on someone here. There's an anointing coming on someone right here. In the name of Jesus. There's an anointing coming on someone here. And the Lord is saying it comes to an end. That family crisis comes to an end. The power of God is resting on someone by my left here. Right now receive that anointing. Let it go in Jesus' name. Be free right now in Jesus' name. The power of God is resting on someone here. Right here, I'm seeing an anointing. Right now. It's a prophetic grace. There's someone here, a prophetic grace is coming upon you. Right now, by my left here. In the name of Jesus, drink of that anointing. Drink of that fountain. May that grace rest upon your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says it is over. Over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at me, my friend. The Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the Spirit. I lay my hands on you. Drink of that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing what looks like smoke. Just this region where, I'm, where you are looking at me. Right now there are four people. I'm seeing the power of God like a wind just coming on them. Just this road right now. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Right now, the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over. He's taking away captivity. Four of you, by the Spirit of grace, let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a family here. Marriage does not happen in that family. But I'm seeing fire rest right now. The embargo is being broken now. The embargo is being broken. Whoever those people are, an anointing is coming on you now. For the sake of your family, that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now. It's breaking right now. In the name of Jesus, please lift your voice and pray. Everybody, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. There is one of you among those standing here. There is a call of God upon your life. An anointing is coming upon you. You will be mightily used by God. Where is that person? Spirit of the living God. The hand of God just near the gate here. The power of God is coming upon that person right now. A new dimension in the spirit. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. May you step into that level in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend. Touch this gentleman for me. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands over you. I command, I'm seeing chains all over your body. I command those chains to give way now. In the name of Jesus, release him now. Let him go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I cut those chains. I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe. Let me pray for those here. Please, all of you are here. I'm, the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence. I'm seeing snakes and I'm seeing five people. There is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now. In the name of Jesus, may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones. Now, five of you, right now. These spirits, my God, my God, I'm seeing something living right now. Release them now. Rele no matter how long, release them now. It is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I declare emancipation now by the Spirit of the living God. You are a gala. I want to pray for you. Are you alone? If you came here alone, what do you do? I want to pray for you. The spirit of death is upon you. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. So that those dreams you used to have, 
seeing dead people. Is that true? You have dreams and the Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now. I declare in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. The there, is, there is someone here. Hi. Academic delay over your family is breaking right now. I just Please don't be carried away acting this thing. I passionately to help full experience God. I'm praying. I don't know where that family is. But right now, scattered in this congregation, I stretch my hands. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit family right now. I'm seeing a family here. None of you has a job. None of you. There are even a few graduates, but nobody at all. It's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now, you're going to sense fire come up your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying, by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the Spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to work effectually. Now, step into that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Among all of you from here to here, the grace for speed is coming on two people. Listen. Those two people will start running now. Please hold them. Hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. That anointing right now. All across. Two you can't control yourself. Hold them please. Whether you are an usher or I release that grace. Speed. Two people. Strange speed. God is ending delay right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing two of you. A prophetic anointing. You are not prophets. But you have been desiring this grace. The grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is. I don't know where they are, but I stretch my hands. May that anointing find you right now. Accuracy of sight. Help them, help them, please. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. An angel of the Lord is taking away reproach. There is a family here. The Lord is saying the captivity ends now. An anointing is coming upon you right now. It's now. In the name of Jesus. Someone here, is it your sister, has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Who is that? Listen, where, where is she? At home. What of you? Come. How long? Who has had three miscarriages? Three miscarriages. Go and tell her she will have a baby girl. That the Lord is giving her a baby girl. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you both. In the name of Jesus, let it come to an end right now. Let that captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, there's someone here, your family has a court case. Court case. Who is that, please? Court case. Don't make sure you don't tell us, please. They want to kill you because of what? What did you do? What did you do? Hold on, I have to. Where are you from? Where is that? 
I have to pray for you. You have bad friends. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Eh? You have very bad friends. Bad friends. You need to be delivered. This is not even your whole life. Eh? You know what I'm saying, right? You need to repent. Eh? Listen. When I make an altar call, run and come. Because the real salvation is you. It's not the issue of court case of this. You, you have friends that are criminals. And we have to pray. You hear what I'm saying? God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people, hear me. When God locates us like this, it's because he wants to help hey, There's somebody here. Your name is Sarah. Where is that person? Sarah. Hold on, please. Don't, don't. Let me just prophesy. I, I, my heart is full. God wants to visit people. Stand up. Who is Sarah? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? No, no. We're state of origin. I want to pray for you. Who is Godia? Yeah. Godia. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. I want to pray for you. Whose mother is in the hospital? I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here. Your mom? Come. I'm seeing lying down in Port Harcourt. Port, uh, yes, I Port Harcourt. You came from Port Harcourt. Go and I'm going to pray for you. Do I know you? I've never seen you. I want to pray for you. God is turning your situation. Please, as you are standing, let your heart be open. Your people may be far. Don't ever think. I'm just because I've come outside like this to encourage you, to let you know that you must not make it inside. You were. Are we together? The power of God is going to come upon you. A loud shout. That will be the person I'll prophesy to right now. In just those outside here. It's not something you can stand. This is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God. That's not a shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, lift your hands. Jesus, come. Do you? What are you doing? What do you do? Of God your own church you are assisting someone you came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother but you came to take fire stand up why you came listen to me you are going to go back and you will step into a dimension of signs and wonders that will surprise you Sarah in the name that is above all names Every oppression over your family, I come against it right now. I'm still hearing that name, Godia. Who is that? Hold on, please. Hold on. Where are you from? Huh? You are from Kat Saminaka. Hold on, please. Your sister. Blood sister. Same father, same mother. You've been praying for God to locate you. It's okay. You. Hi. The spirit of death is over your family. Huh? That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people. They will come and they are calling you. Sometimes they are saying you should eat together. This is the spirit of death coming on the family. But in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you, help her. I cut spirit now name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a family money does not stay in your house no matter what happens once resources enter you love God but resources something must happen either sickness or they will steal it or something will come up I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame and it's resting on at least five people and the Lord is saying, an end comes to financial hardship. Father, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. Let that anointing locate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. My friend, 
your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. An end comes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit, everyone. My dear, look at me. I command that spirit to leave you now. Of darkness must let you go in Jesus' name. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Please pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, everyone. Madam, help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it. I command everything that is not of God to let you go now. Release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oppression leaves right now. Someone here, there is a spirit that has oppressed your family. It must go now. I command that devil of darkness, help her please. That spirit must leave now. In the name of Jesus. Please everyone pray in the spirit. Everyone pray in the spirit. God is visiting us right now. One media person here, there is an anointing resting on someone. The Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family. I'm seeing it by the Spirit of God. Captivity coming to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, let it end now by the Spirit of the living God. Let it end now in the name of Jesus. My friend, I'm seeing what, what looks like a towel on you. And the Lord is wiping away infirmity. In the name of Jesus, infirmity, let it go right now. Please make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The Spirit of death, there is a family here. That Spirit must go now. The spirit of death, release them now. In the name of Jesus, release them now. Release them now. The spirit of death, there will be no obituary. I command that devil to go now. Madam, excuse me. Madam, look at me. Come. Are you a man of God? Come. You too. Please come. I don't know you. Where are you coming from, sir? Where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me. From Anambra State. You came all the way. Ah. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry. That God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 The Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer, is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm. I'm, what's your name? You must always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer, is this your child? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from? From Ibu State. Huh? From GRA. No, no, where, where are you coming Kaduna State. Kaduna State. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, I want to pray for you. Well, this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 I will pray for you. Mama, where are you coming from? I come from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday? Yes. What are you trusting God for? Ah, my 
tu as fait l'Amérique, tu dois la faire plus de nous. Si tu as fait l'Amérique, tu dois la faire plus de nous. Tu as fait l'Amérique, 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 You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter, but it's you. First, that back pain. Eh? That back pain that you have. You get up in the morning and there's severe back pain. That back pain will leave you now. That's number one. Number two, the dead people you see in your dream. Eh? Sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died. But they are alive talking to you. Jesus. I need to pray for you. And then number three, God is going to visit your daughter. Tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough. And in the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? Yes, sir. You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, sir. Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did I you know. apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing that they are going to give you a job. Ah, huh? I will pray for you, sir, because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you. And that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. I have one. No. Hold on. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? I'm seeing one child. Then the vision changes and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one. You have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. The, yes, sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you are great children. You understand? Please, don't fight that child, eh? Madam, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but... May God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier. And there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman. And don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, God gave you a good woman. She's a good woman. Madam, you are a good woman. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, sir. Please hold my hands. In the name that is above all names, I open up every closed door over your life and destiny. I shift you to that realm of wealth in Jesus' name. The person, look up, please. The person who comes to molest you when you sleep, it comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus, every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever. In the name of Jesus. I don't know why, why are they here? Who is Sarah? Are you married? We are no more together. Huh? I have two children, but we are not together with you. You father. are not together with your husband. Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem, eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, just, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness. 
from the midst of you taking away sickness my dear in the name of jesus is it the same man that has the children yes huh? yes why doesn't he want to marry you he didn't pay for my dowry he didn't pay for your dowry yes go and tell him that i said he should pay for your dowry huh dowry is not building project he should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance please at this level is no longer about their comfort the children need a father may god grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing written in the air polygamy god is breaking that spirit now no 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 just please just keep quiet i'm ministering there is a spirit of polygamy everybody in that family you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone that anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit is a covenant it's not a desire coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble right now that spirit please help them in the name of Jesus inside outside everywhere the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now sir let me pray for you where are you coming from sir Port Harcourt, what do you do? I do business. You do business. But things are not going well. Huh? If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you in the court because of money, debt. Huh? I hope you're not embarrassed. You came here so that I pray for you. What are you trusting God for? I'm trusting God for breakthrough in my business. Breakthrough in your business. First, your. My wife, um, I've been listening to your tape for about seven days now. And the last dream she had, you came to pray for her. And she insisted that she come the night session. I will pray for you. More than business breakthrough, sir, is your relationship with God. Do you understand? Please don't be embarrassed, but your relationship with God. In this kingdom, we prosper as our souls prosper, not at the detriment of our soul. So that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life. I pray that God will cause your hearts to love him more than money in the name of Jesus and that in so doing, he will bless you and lift you. I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nesera State. You are from where? Nesera. How many are you? I'm from extended family. We are many. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but oh. in my mother's side, we are 82. I've gone, we are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. You hear what I'm saying? The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the son Amen. of the living God. You will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? You have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? Huh? I'm Lenny Salomon. You are, I'm not Lenny. I'm Lenny Salomon. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see these kinds of vision. The moment I see this kind of things is a sign that, you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Sakato I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, please listen very carefully. God is touching everyone, every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, Make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you are not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. 
what you're trusting God for. Lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy. Open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you are doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing, trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? Particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen, listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here, that's overflow two. Um, overflow three is from the end of CGC down to second equa. Okay, you are overflow two B. Let's call it two B. Are we together? Then the overflow from the beginning of this fence down, right down there. We'll call you overflow two C. Please listen. Then there's overflow three. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. This is the main auditorium. This is overflow one. This is overflow two. Then from this place down to second equis overflow two B. From that same place down is overflow two C. So that, so that you would know if you are trusting God, no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb, I'll pray for you. But then all who are in here, overflow one, I mean overflow here, please, you're trusting God for healing, come stand here. Overflow one, come and stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow two, stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2A, please create a space for them there. Overflow 2A, create a space for them there. And then overflow 2C, stand in front of your projector stand. And then overflow 3, you can stand in, um, in front of your projector stand. Those online, connect by faith. And then we'll pray, we'll pray with you. We're going to do this very fast. We thank God there are many hands today. And while they minister to you, I would like you to believe God for a miracle. You are a man of God. You are a ministry here. Open up your heart and connect. You are trusting God for the grace, for signs, wonders. Make sure that you connect. The worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that. And concurrently, while that is happening, please make sure you submit your prayer request. Everyone, make sure you pen down your prayer request. And then we are going to pray on it and let the God of heaven... Visit us right now. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Um, Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh. Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh will do overflow three. There are quite a number of people there. Overflow three. Um, Benga will do overflow two. Overflow two. Pastor Alpha. And Ima, you do overflow one. Um, overflow one. We need a way of reaching overflow. Kenny. Kenny will do overflow 2B. Overflow 2B. We'll do overflow 2B. And then Isaac. Isaac in media. You will do overflow 2C. Let's make it that way. Praise the Lord. Father, we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that as we minister to everyone across, let your healing power touch, deliver, set free in the name of Jesus. Do this and be glorified even by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please, we'll do it very, very fast. And while you are seated, make sure you are agreeing, releasing your faith in the name of Jesus. Madam, you lift, lift your hands. You, this woman. No. The one wearing blue and white. Yes. Lift your hand. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. And the Lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you. This is what I'm seeing. An anointing is coming on you right now. And the Lord is saying he's taking away reproach. And he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Father, let there be miracles, signs, wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Let's stretch our hands to the prayer request. Begin to pray in the spirit. Lord, you are the God that answers prayers. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Pray over these requests. He said, these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. There is a covenant of answered prayer in this place. Lift your voice and pray. Father, I decree and I declare. I prophesy, I proclaim by the spirit of grace that this is a representation of the pain of people, a representation of their hunger. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, are you praying? Decree and declare that everything written here in the name of Jesus will become a testimony. Everything written here, we invoke the power of the Holy Ghost upon every request here. Supernatural deliveries, terminations of delay, open doors, new spiritual dimensions in the name of Jesus, admissions, graduations, jobs, marriages, children, restoration, advancement, promotion. In the name that is above all names, we decree and declare. Make sure you are praying. Make your declaration. These that are brought before the God of all flesh will never, never, never return as a disappointment. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit those online joining us from all over the world connect in the name of Jesus from America to Asia the UK Canada everywhere we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen I want you to understand that this is not a ritual this is a mystery are we together now there are all kinds of testimonies that have come I can prophesy and there is so much. I can be limited. I cannot discern everybody's expectation. But this is a representation of your hunger. It's a representation of your tears. And let me tell you this. Please don't get familiar with this. This is not some, some spiritual thing just for the fun of it. There is power in what we are doing. It's guided by understanding. It's guided by an anointing. And God has a covenant, is protected by his jealousy. In the name of Jesus, Paul said, For this cause I, Paul, bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you. In the name of Jesus, I declare upon you that the Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus, every request here that is a death sentence, cancer, HIV, and any kind of incurable disease, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. Every impossible situation represented here, may the God of wonders arise tonight in the name of Jesus and do wonders by the power of the Holy Ghost. For those of you who have submitted these requests, on behalf of your loved ones, I declare, may the angel of God's presence, these angels that do not know time and distance, may they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and birth supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life we're entering the second half of the year it says revive thy work O God in the midst of the year I decree and declare every spiritual weariness every prayerlessness it dies right now in the name of Jesus passion for the things of the spirit like never before hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus. I declare prayer fire like never before. Let it rest upon your life now. I decree and declare an appetite for God and the things of God. I declare you receive it right now. 
I pray over your lives. Every long standing issue. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have sought counsel. It has refused to change. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. By this time next month. Return with your testimony. By this time next month. Return with your testimony. Please believe it. Don't just shout amen. Believe it. I come against patterns. You have seen it in others. You saw it in your father. You saw it in your loved ones. You saw it in your siblings. Now it's beginning to happen. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cancel every pattern now. I cancel every pattern now. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Everything that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already, I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, this month coming, it must enter your hands. I declare that it must enter your hands. There are families where is the women that feed the men. Have you seen such families? No matter how hardworking the men are, they never feed the family. They get up in the morning and play draughts from morning till night while the women go to fetch. It's an anomaly. I declare by the Spirit of God, I'm praying for the men now, the grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early. Receive that anointing right now. It says, satisfy me early. I'm saying it again. Everybody here who is a man, and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life. I decree and declare, like Jacob, Laban must let you go in the name of Jesus. I pray for every Mordecai here. You have been good to others. You have been good to kings. Your records have been written, but you have not been rewarded. In this season, by the Spirit of God, we open a book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven, between now and the next three months, like the ark of God in the house of Obed-Edom, I decree and declare, jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain, may my God give it to you. Every dying business, hear the word of the Lord. I don't care what has happened. By the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, I speak to you. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Everyone who is in ministry here, no matter what level there are dimensions, I pray for you. You will go back to your various churches, fellowships, and assemblies. And a dimension of fire, a dimension of insight you have never seen, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone here called barren by the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, return with your children. These are not empty prophecies, believe them. They are backed up by the jealousy of God. They will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where the helpers of your destiny are. But in the name of Jesus, every man who must arise in this season for your sake, to favor you, wherever they are around this globe, by the spirit of grace, I call them to your life now. 
I call them to your life now. The Bible says that strangers shall feed your flock. It says your gates shall be open continually. It shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. People you do not know, I compel them to be interested in your lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prayed a prayer like this one time and one of us, God just opened a door and a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira. Listen, it doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. There is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life. Every area of struggle. I stand by the God of heaven who is called Ebenezer, the God of Jeshurun. In the name of Jesus, receive help from the Lord. I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book you have ideas you have projects is just to connect you with somebody who has the interest nobody helps you on their own they are called by prophecy in the name of Jesus right now I connect your ideas to your helpers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I forgot to pray for those who are in various institutions writing their exams. I know that many people had started their exams. Some have written. And the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense. You need the mercy of God. In the name that is above all names. Much more than what you have written. In the name of Jesus. May the mercy of God show up in your exam. There is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy. Please pay attention. Our time is gone, but I want to speak this into your life. There are people who are not very smart. The prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable. The prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn. It's a system of God's mercy. It would be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles. There are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation. But there is the ordinance of prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the God who has helped me by his grace, the God who has helped this ministry, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here due for promotion, but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men. Go back into your next level. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I want to pray for you. Honor is the ability to discern, to celebrate, and to reward a man for his uniqueness. It's not enough for your value to be discerned. You must live a rewarded life. You will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life. I pray for you. The eyes that can perceive and can discern your value, I connect you to those eyes in the name of Jesus.
any pit you have found yourself in, I must pray this. Financially, whatever it is, you have found yourself in a situation where only God can bring you out. May that God you believe in bring you out of it now. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word. The Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no, the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise we bless you because you have honored this house you have made it a place of answers you have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, man of God, I've seen the wonders. I once gave my heart to the Lord. But as it is right now, I need mercy. I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here inside overflow one two three and all the other annexes i want to give you five minutes you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here it will be my joy to lead you to jesus christ don't wait for someone be the first i'll count one to five wherever you are please start running clear the way for them please outside one quickly quickly please if you're coming run quickly run to jesus two Win that war today, win that war today, win that war today. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Three, someone is still coming. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. I expect people to come from outside. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. Clear the way for those coming from outside. Overflow, one, two, three. If you're coming, don't be sluggish. Run very quickly. We're out of time. Run quickly. Run quickly. We're out of time. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Give them a big God bless you whilst they come takes a lot of courage but win that war young and old run to Jesus the Bible says ye must be born again <laughs> hallelujah praise the Lord I want to salute all of you thank you so much for coming to make this decision lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me you're not reciting a poem this is from the depth of your heart Jesus is here say after me Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I have seen your wonders and I declare that I need you this night I declare that you are my Lord you are my Savior you are my King I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life. I am a child of God. I'm changed forever. 
Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for. I thank you because when you hung on that cross, they were worth your blood. They were worth the tears. They were worth the death. I pray in the name of Jesus, according to scripture, your sins are forgiven. And the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory given by the Spirit of God. Everything that is not of God, I come against it right now. The grace to live victorious is released upon you. From today, you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I congratulate you. I salute you. Very quickly, everyone in concert, I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. And you will have a few people. Just welcome. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and lekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.